Well, glory. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. So good to have you with us. Appreciate you coming out in the house of the Lord. Appreciate those watching live stream, I guess. I guess everybody else didn't need a double portion tonight, but you know what? We're going to get us a double portion. We're going to let God move and let God have his way. We're going to just do what God wants us to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just, I mean, just be honest, I'm just not satisfied. We're, we're, just, uh, we're just an hour here and there uh, around God and God's people around church. I got to have God all the time. I got to have God all the time. Let me tell you again, I got to have God all the time. Hallelujah. I'm as churchy as Noah was arky. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You better, hallelujah. You better be careful. We're allowed to start having church seven days a week. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My wife already does. At home, she lives with me. Praise the Lord. But it's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's so good to have you with us tonight to worship the Lord. Thank you for being here. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for being on live stream, watching tonight live. Looking forward to what God's going to do. How He's blessing, how He's ministering. Hope you came expecting tonight to, that God would move in your life. Hallelujah. Good to have you. We're going to open prayer. Welcome His presence. Ask Him to have His way, minister to the needs of the church, needs of the people, and just do a mighty work. You help us pray tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we truly come before your throne tonight loving you, <clears throat> praising you, thanking you for all the things. Lord, we thank you for the service this morning, God. You showed up and showed out. You moved in a mighty way. You touched our life. And Lord, you've been touching all day. You've been blessing all day. You've been ministering to hearts and souls all day. God, tonight is no different. I believe you're going to come out and show out and show up tonight in our lives. Lord, we just welcome you in this place. Welcome your power and your presence. Lord, help us to be a one mind and one accord. Let your Holy Ghost power and anointing shine forth in our lives and we can be your people. We can do your will and be what you have us to be. Lord, we love you tonight. Lord, we just can't get enough of you. Hallelujah. Oh, God. 
upload it. When you get to feel like traveling on, when you get to feel like the Lord can come at any moment and you're just going to just going to keep running for the grace of the Lord and for the race of God. Hallelujah. Keep running. Let God move you. Hallelujah. Good to have you tonight in service. Appreciate you being here. Don't forget about our announcements. Uh, excuse me, our uh, prayer requests for the Lord and prayer to the needs of our church at this time. Let's remember our lost loved ones and they'll get saved before it's everlasting too late. You see, when we leave this world, we draw our last breath. It's too late. There's no changes going to take place. There's nothing else can take place. When we draw our last breath on this side, <clears throat> we're going somewhere for eternity. That's why we've got to keep our lost loved ones in prayer. Remember our children, keep them in prayer. Our school system, our country, God will touch our country, our government, all those involved. God will just move in a mighty way. God will touch in our nation, touch in our country, touch in our people. God will just move in a mighty way. Let's also keep uh, Don Willie in prayer. Lord, we'll touch him. Uh, he's in the hospital right now looking at some surgery. Let's keep Don Whitley in prayer. God will touch him, minister in his need. Also, let's keep Sister Mary in prayer. Ms. Brenda, God will touch and minister in their life and touch them in a mighty way uh, tonight. Let's also uh, uh, continue to keep Brother uh, John in prayer. Uh, I suppose we're supposed to go to Dr. S. Let's keep him in prayer. God will touch. Also, keep Nikki and baby Hayden in prayer. Lord, will touch. Help them this week. Also, let's keep Gage in prayer. God will touch. He's supposed to go to the doctor. Uh, for to the CT scan Friday. Please keep Gage in prayer. Gage and Chris, Lord, will touch them and bless them, minister in their needs. One of you have a request tonight to give me. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. You get on the prayer. Touch it. Bless it. Have everything to be what it needs to be. Hallelujah. And also keep uh, Danielle and Chris in prayer. Maybe Adeline, Kate, the Lord, touch them, bless them, minister in their needs. Also keep uh, uh, Troy and Tegan in prayer. Lord, touch them, minister in life and family. Just touch their home. God will move in the mighty way. Yes. Thank 
good. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Sure, we all have these little bits all about symbolized love to him. You just pray with us as if he was called upon tonight. Our most heavenly, gracious heavenly Father, Lord, we love you tonight. We praise you. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done. Your many blessings, Lord, you've reached out and you've touched in a mighty way. You've touched our lives. You've touched in our hearts and souls. You've touched and you've got us out of situations before. Lord, we just ask you tonight, Lord, just remember us. Here we are again, God. Lord, just remember us. Lord, we're standing in the need of prayer. Lord, we love you tonight. You're the only one to pray to. You're the only one to come through.
He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah. I'm free tonight because of Jesus. I'm free tonight because of God. Free tonight because of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Moving in lives and moving in homes. Hallelujah. Good to have you tonight. Don't forget about our announcements. Don't forget Tuesday night conference call at 7. We invite to tell people to get online on the phone telephone and talk uh, tell them for devotion time and prayer time. It's a good time uh, during the week where we get on there and we, we listen and we, we uh, uh, get to tell uh, get to uh, add on to the devotion as well as uh, prayer requests. Just be telling people uh, that they need to, they need to log on uh, to the phone sometime and try us out. Check it out. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. People all around spend hours and hours and hours on the telephone each week gossiping. They spend 35 minutes on the conference call. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Help me. Praise, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The conference call is very uplifting. I am very pleased and thrilled with that conference call. That when we, and we start on Sunday nights and then we start back Sunday night church and we're doing it on Tuesday night. I mean, it's just been it's just been uplifting. You know, it's a, it's awesome because we don't know during the week, you know, uh, what kind of uh, day people have had in school, work, whatever the case, and just to get on there and be one with another, not at the same place as far as physical place, but we're at the same place. We're on that phone line and we're hearing each other and we're talking to each other. So it's just uplifting to me. I just feel like it's just awesome. It's a, it's a great opportunity for people to, to get on there and if they've had a bad day, to be uplifted by someone, by something someone says. And so that's why I urge a lot of people to get on that conference call because it's, it's very important to, to stay connected uh, to God. This, this, this world and, and the enemy, the devil, has a lot to offer people. And if we don't stay connected with God and with God's people, somehow, some way, the devil can try to sneak in a crook, a nook, or a cranny and try to get us out of what we need to have for God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Don't forget about that. Wednesday night, Grandma Turn Hour 7. Be invited to tell people. Stop by and pick somebody up. Tell them you'll come get them. See them walking down the street. Tell them, hey, you want to ride? Uh, they might say they want to go home and say, hey, how about let's stop by this? <laughs> say, let's stop by this one place before you go home. Uh, we'll, we'll send Logan uh, to pick them up if they, if they just need to ride. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But, but no, uh, you know, you never know what somebody will say. You just, just invite them. Hallelujah. Just invite them. Tell people to come out. Next Sunday, Sunday School 10, one more school 11, Sunday night 6, we invite them. <clears throat> Not next Saturday, but the next. It's only two weeks away is our uh, uh, sweetheart banquet. If you want to come, please come. Make sure you sign up between now and this Wednesday night on our uh, roster there in the uh, vestibule. Please sign up. It won't cost you anything. All we're going to ask is some of the ladies will bring a dessert. That's all we're going to ask. Uh, but So it won't cost you anything. Just come. Uh, and be, it's fun. Uh, if you have children or grandchildren or somebody that you want having the, uh, with, the, with the sitters, uh, there's only $5 a child. I mean, it's, it's just an awesome time. We're going to come together. We're going to gather together. We're going to eat good. We're just going to be a presentation. We just going to have a fun time together as God's people. So if you want to come, come on. We'd love to have you. We're going to uh, we are going to uh, do the, the social distance stuff, you know, with the mask work from the table, all the all the regular road. We're going to still do that, but you know what? Uh, God can God can still uh, take things that that seems a dread and a drag, you know. But I'm I'm one of the world's worst. I hate wearing a mask, but uh, take some of those drag and you know, dreads and, and drags as far as uh, what we don't want to do, and God can turn those things around to where we'll have an awesome time in God. And so I, I just encourage you, if you want to come, please sign up uh, by Wednesday night. <clears throat> then we're going to take that and, and figure out how many people to plan for and how many people, uh, uh, how much food to get. And so we're going to have a good time. Looking forward to that. We're on the 13th, Saturday, February 13th at 6 p.m. A lot of things coming up, a lot of things taking place. We've got church cleanup day coming up in March. We'll be announcing soon. Uh, <clears throat> we'll be uh, letting you know that cleanup day in March. A lot of things uh, going on, a lot of things taking place, praise the Lord, so uh, just good about that. We, uh, we finally uh, uh, received, we haven't got them up yet, but uh, we spent all the rest of the monies um, from our grant for, um, for uh, uh, TVs, well, one TV, big TV for the Children's Chapel. There's a smaller TV that was donated, praise the Lord, a brand new one uh, for the uh, nursery. I appreciate that being donated, so we'll try to get those up uh, quick.
quickly, and uh, so uh, that, and that will uh, mostly complete the majority of what we had going on. A couple of things we still haven't done yet, but we will. Uh, so a lot of things taking place. Uh, God's moving. God's doing the work. And uh, we're just preparing uh, for how God wants to use us. So just keep praying. Keep praying that God will keep sending people in. And, uh, you know, God will send, uh, uh, God will just keep sending the adults, the children, the, the youth, the teenagers, the workers, and everybody. Praise the Lord. Because if we don't keep inviting and keep telling people to come in, the preacher's going to pray about the babies again. So everyone needs to be, everyone needs to be praying. God sent the people in. And you know what? I've got a helper to help pray. His name is Mr. George. Mr. George will help me pray as well. So, so anyway, I would suggest, I would say, yeah, pray for me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we'll uh, so, uh, be invited to be telling people, come on out and worship the Lord. God's doing something Amen. around here. God's ministry moving. It's all right to have a good time. It's all right to have, have fun. God, God, uh, doesn't expect us to be serious at all times. Then there's times when he wants us serious. But he allows us to have a laugh. He allows us to have a good time. And I, I enjoy that. I appreciate God. I love him so much. <clears throat> Most important announcement tonight, Jesus coming Sunday. Better not he's coming for a church, coming for people, coming for those looking for him. Hallelujah. Have I missed any announcements? Oh, uh, choir practice next Sunday at 4.30. Next Sunday, choir practice at 4.30 here at the church. If you're singing the choir, want to sing the choir, think about singing the choir, uh, be here at 4.30 next Sunday. We missed anything else. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. This time we're going to take our evening tithing off. Big Bubba to come and.
Hallelujah. We're on holy ground. We have to be reverent. We have to be respectful and understand God. Right. Oh, Moses, as he was calling him out of the burning fire, uh, burning fiery bush, not to come any closer. Take your shoes off if you're on holy ground. Hallelujah. Which represents reverence. Take everything off of the world and reverence God. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is so holy. Good to have you in the house of the Lord tonight. Good to have you watching live stream. I appreciate you having, appreciate you being here, appreciate you being here with us tonight. Thank you for coming out to worship the Lord and magnifying and honoring God. God is so good. Hallelujah. I appreciate you being here tonight. You watching. Heavenly Bibles, Acts chapter 27. The Lord's going to turn me loose, wind me up, and let me go tonight. So hallelujah. Yeah. I might need to wear that seatbelt Brother Jordan was trying to get. It. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Acts 27. It's a familiar passage, but it's probably going to be in a manner you've never heard. The Lord spoke to me this week. I'll share the rest with you just a little bit. Acts 27, beginning verse 38. Acts 27, verse 38. Look over at your neighbor and say, I'm glad you came tonight. Look over at your neighbor and say, I'm glad you came tonight. Hallelujah. Those of you watching live stream, send a little, send a little message saying, I'm glad to be here tonight. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're glad to have you. Glad you to be a part of us. Acts 27, 38. And when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship, cast out the wheat into the sea. And when it was day, they knew not the land. But they discovered a certain creek with a shore into the which they were minded, if it were possible, to thrust in the ship. When they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves into the sea and loosed the rudder bands, poised up the mainsail to the wind and made towards shore. Falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground, and the forepart stuck fast and remained unmovable. But the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves, and the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. The rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. Heavenly Father, we come before you this night loving you and praising you. Lord, I thank you for allowing us to be here tonight. Lord, I thank you for sending me by this way. God, I know that you've ordained in such a time as this. I know that you've ordained this message for tonight, God. I just ask you to have your way. Let your, let your power and anointing shine forth through this message into people's lives. Anoint our ears to hear, hearts to receive, mouths to speak. God, you have some for us. I ask you to have your way. I ask you to do your will. Do your work tonight. We love you. We praise you. We thank you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Everyone say it. Amen. Amen. When they are a wreck. When they are a wreck. The whole day, everything that has went on, everything that has been happened at church, went on, done, said, has surrounded this message. And the Lord impressed me earlier today, or this singing when we was at church, that for this message, he had to get everyone prepared to receive this message tonight. That's why I couldn't preach it this morning. He had to do the work to till your heart. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. To prepare you to receive this tonight. Hallelujah. God is so good. Amen. God is good all the time. Hallelujah. The other day I was driving, and I, I've shared this with one other person. The other day I was driving down the road in my patrol car, minding my own business. Just, just driving down the road and praying. I like to, a lot of times I'll pray and talk to the Lord, not with my eyes closed while I'm driving now. 
but I but I will talk to the Lord. I pray and try to discern and study and, and see what God has in store for us for the future or for the next as far as the, the messages coming up and, and what, what he wants me to preach and to be prepared. And the other day I was driving and it felt like kind of like a brick hit me. It was it was just like God speaking to me. It wasn't an audible voice. It wasn't him uh, hollering at me, but it was just a sweet presence of God within me, within my spirit, and, and, and just began to impress on my mind. Now, let me tell you, I'm not the uh, the unsmartest cookie in the batch, but I'm by no means the smartest cookie in the batch. And so, I'm going to say some things tonight that there's no way that I could come up with on my own. God is the author of this message tonight, and I want you to understand that. But it began to speak to my spirit. I began to receive this. And I wrote it down. I wrote it down. And here's what, here's what came to my spirit. We're going to have some people come in that are in wrath. And all we have to do is love them. That's right. Amen. And God will do the rest. Amen. He breathed that into my spirit the other day, driving down the road. Hallelujah. The sudden... Hallelujah. The Sunday school lesson was all on top of it. The service this morning was all on top of this. Sister Marsha's testimony was all on top of this. This morning. God confirming, God confirming multiple times what he has for us. I'm going to read it again. I wrote it down because I, my mind sometimes I forget. I mean, I, I can't even get these two young ladies' names right. You know, I, I forget so I had to write this down. We're going to have some people come in that are ready. And all we have to do is love them and God will do the rest. That's what was breathed into my spirit. And that's what I believe. And so I understand. And I, I want you to understand this message tonight was breathed into my spirit. And I, I, I thought it was for this morning, but obviously it was not. We know that now. But I'm coming tonight to tell you that, that when people come in as a wreck, there's some things that has to be accomplished, some things that take place, some things that has to be done, some things that, that needs to be understood because you see, not everybody is like us. Not everybody uh, looks the same, acts the same, smells the same, and not everybody believes the same. But let me tell you, hallelujah, God can change a person. God can do the work in a person. God can mold and make people. Hallelujah, people. I praise the Lord, people that don't come in to You don't know what you're talking about. We're going to take off. 
And they set sail. And they went. And it wasn't long until a tempestuous wind came up. This tempestuous wind had a name. You replied it was the name of this wind. Basically a hurricane came up. Big storm, big waves because they had a name. Uh, it was so bad and so and so big that it was just terrible. It was awful and it was it was terrible. And so things began to happen to the ship. Things began to happen. You know this story, hallelujah, but I'm setting the stage for what I'm about to tell you. And we look at this story, they're out there and the wind is blowing and the, the winds are strong and the waves are strong. And things are fixing to get real, real quick. Things are fixing to get serious real quick. Paul tried to tell them. Paul tried to, mm, help the Lord. Paul tried to warn them. Paul tried to love them. But they wouldn't have anything to do with it. They're, they're out here in the middle of this ocean. Middle of this water. And this tempestuous wind. First of all, you understand, the winds blow. The wind was forceful. The wind was frightful. The wind was beginning to blow. The wind began to blow the ship to where they couldn't steer it any longer. It was so much force that as they was going, they would try to go this way, it would go that way. And try to go that way, it would go to the way. Because you see, when you have a hurricane or a tempestuous wind, those little sails on the ship aren't going to do too much for you, church. Hallelujah. Those, those little things that, that, they, that they thought was going to get them by, those little, little sails that thought that was going to help them to get to where they needed to be, wasn't going to help them uh, very long. Because, you see, this wind began to cause the waves to enlarge, began to call the waves to be begin to call the, uh, cause the waves to cause damage to the sails and the wind begin to damage and, and the sails and everything. They had to lighten the ship. They had to lighten these things and the wind was blowing so strong that, that they all began to lose hope. There was hope that was being lost at that time because they thought everybody was going to die. Everybody was going to go under. It was uh, going to be terrible. All hope was lost. Hallelujah. The winds were blowing. And I tender to you tonight. There will be people coming in that the winds have been blowing in their life. Maybe you're in that shape tonight. The winds of life have been blowing to and fro in their life. The winds of the devil huffing and puffing, trying to blow them down. The winds of the world trying to get them to believe this and believe that. The winds and the chatter of this one over here and that one over here. <coughs> and gossip Sally and gossip Annie and gossip this one over here trying to discourage them. Let me tell you, there's going to be people that's going to come in that's going to be having the wind ship up. Winds of life blowing to and fro, causing the waves of life, causing the hardships of life to begin to mount and mount and mount on their lives and on their living and on who they are. You see people, the worldly desires, the naysayers that says there is no God or the naysayers says, well, y'all ought not to try to live so holy or righteous. Y'all ought, ought not to try to be so good. Let me tell you, there's nothing wrong with being good, church. Hallelujah. There's never been anything wrong with being good. I'm tired of this evil world trying to make me be evil. Hallelujah. Because I'm going to serve God. Hallelujah. No matter what. And that's what we've got to remember. The winds of the world are going to blow. And there's people that's going to come in that the winds have blown in their life and have blown so strong that they're in the middle of chaos. Their mind is a whirlwind. They don't know who to believe, what to believe, and how to believe. Hallelujah. Help me, Jesus. <clears throat> Hallelujah. They've got this place called a place of worship over here. Say, the little dad, Jesus is all you need. <laughs> got, this, got this place of worship over here that says, oh, you don't have to live so righteous. God understands. Got this place of worship over here that says, you know, you can get by with that. That's just a little sin. Uh, I got this worship place over here that says, oh, it won't hurt you. Everything will be all right. Everybody does it. The winds. Talk about the winds tonight. You're gliding. Talk about the winds, the hurricane of life, the hurricane that is blowing across this land. Hallelujah. Got people. Believing and supporting things as against God's word. Got people believing and supporting because they've been taught wrong. Hallelujah. Just cause. Mm -hmm, help me, Jesus. Just cause mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, sister, brother does it, doesn't mean it's right. Just because the government says you can, don't mean it's right with God. Hallelujah. Just because the boss man says go ahead and it'll be all right, don't mean it's right. Let me tell you, hallelujah. You've got.
got to understand, hallelujah, that the winds of the world is blowing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I remember learning through working and through studying and, and working in, in the secular job in law enforcement. And then from becoming a supervisor, I've learned that when, a per when you ask a person to do something, it has to be right, it has to be ethical to the best of your ability. Because anybody that doesn't listen to their boss when the boss says do something wrong or something unethical, they're not disobeying the boss, they're doing the right thing. You understand what I'm saying? We got to do what's right and what's ethical across this land. We got to do what's right and what's ethical. I'm talking about it in the secular world, but I'm also talking about it in the spiritual world. It's time that we understand there's people that's going to come in that the winds of life have blown them to and fro. They've blown them from over, blown from over here to over there to back there to over yonder. They've blown them everywhere. They all they need and all they can can stand. It's just somebody that'll love them, somebody that'll care, somebody that'll say, you know what? I know the winds of life have blown you here and there and everywhere, but we just want to love. The winds of life blowing. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Many times the winds of life tosses people <clears throat> to where they want to <clears throat> lose things in the ship, the ship of life. They want to lose things. And many people have found it easier and the easiest things in their life to discard and throw out of their ship. Hold on for this. It's some of these things right here. First of all, it's prayer. That's the first thing people that's been blown by the winds of life want to do. Well, that prayer didn't help me, so I'm not praying no more. That's what they'll say. Yeah. Well, I've been praying for 28 years. It ain't going to work, so I'm through praying. The winds of life have caused people to cast prayer out of the ship. Secondly, cast the Word of God, the Bible, out of the ship. Well, I used to read the Bible. But it didn't get me nowhere, so I quit reading. It's what people will say. Oh, hallelujah. Help me, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, I used to study the Word, study the Bible. I used to be into that, but you know what? It just turned out it wasn't so fun. So I, I'm going to do this over here. I'm going to just start reading my Southern Living magazine, and that will help me to see how to plant my garden. So everything will be all right. Let me tell you tonight, hallelujah, God don't need anybody to throw out the prayers and the Bibles. He needs people to get into the prayer room, into the Bible. Hallelujah, worship the Lord. Only reason, nothing against Southern Living Magazine. Only reason I knew that because Sheila had one the other day that was in the house. So there's nothing wrong with Southern Living Magazine. Let me, let me just say that. I don't want to get home and get scolded. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Nothing wrong with Southern Living Magazine. They're open. There's nothing wrong with them. That's just what came to my mind because we had one there in the house. It was shipped to them. But anyways, prayer in the Bible. Oh, and here's a big Hallelujah. Church. Oh, help me, Jesus. Church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to park here. That's right. Hallelujah. A lot of people, hallelujah, they begin to put uh, church attendance or church uh, going on the back burner. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's one thing. Hallelujah. I'm talking about before the COVID and even during the COVID. It's all right. If people are out because they're cautious and they're they're staying home and they're and because they're cautious and they want to protect themselves, I have no problem with that. And those people get online and do the live stream and view during the week. But let me tell you, hallelujah, there ain't no reason why somebody can't get on the live stream or the viewing during the seven days of the week. Hallelujah, if they're cautious and staying out. Let me tell you, hallelujah, you know what? And people that used to go to church three and four and five times a week, and now they cut it down to maybe they'll go once every two weeks or every three weeks. Let me tell you, God's got something to say about that. The winds of life have blown, and people have kicked out church attendance or church viewing in their, in their, in their priorities. They've kicked it out and said, well, we better lighten the tackle. We better lighten the ship because we're being tossed about. You see, the world and the devil don't want you praying and reading the Bible. The world and the devil don't want you going to church unless you're trying to tear up the church. Hey, man, help me, Jesus. Hallelujah. The devil don't want, don't want you going to church. But when people make an effort to go or to watch live stream, and do, and I appreciate the ones that watch live stream, when they're not here, I've seen that they've watched live stream and they've viewed. I understand. I know that. I thank God for that. Thank you for watching live stream. Thank you for viewing. 
Hallelujah. Some of you that have had times when you couldn't make it to church, you've watched live stream and you viewed it. I know that. That's good. I appreciate that. Hallelujah. 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 But there's some that ain't watched Know what Church of God in six months. It's all right. I'm just going to melt on the park here. The winds, I'm talking about the winds of life, the hurricane of life. The winds are going to blow. But it's what we do when the winds blow that matters. Hallelujah. The winds are going to blow and send people in. Send people in to our, to our place of worship. That the winds have blown and told them that you don't have to read the Bible. Told them you don't have to go to church. Told them you don't have to pray as much as you pray. Told them, well, that preacher over there prays three or four times a, a service. You don't need to pray that much. What they tell them? Let me tell you, hallelujah, I didn't get anything except through prayer. I had to become anything except through prayer. It's because of prayer that I'm saying this. Because of prayer, I'm saying about it. Because of prayer, I'm holding those still. Because of prayer that I'm here tonight. Because of prayer, everything has happened in my life. Hallelujah. 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 Some of the things that want to go out of the ship is godly living. Hallelujah. Like what Sister Marsha said this morning. There's a lot of good people. Thank you, Sister Marsha said. There's a lot of good people that have died lost. There's a lot of good people that have left this world and went to a horrible place called hell because they wouldn't have a part of God to live in. There's a lot of good people that you go by the, any cemetery you want to go to that have been buried there. A lot of good people that their carnal bodies have been buried there. But let me tell you, just being good won't get you to heaven. Amen. Just being good. And there's a lot of people that are out here in this world that believe that just by being good, everything's going to be all right. There's going to be some people that have that mindset that are going to come in to the house of God. And somebody's got to love them. I'm not talking about put them down. I'm talking about show them the truth. Share the truth. Let them see a godly life. And God is living, that living godly is much better than living for the world. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 You know what? Hallelujah. When the Holy Ghost gets on me, hallelujah, and I just give on one of those Holy Ghost highs and Holy Ghost blessings, when I wake up the next day, listen, I don't have a headache. I don't have to worry about what did I do wrong or what did I do right or what did I do, what did I do. You know what? Hallelujah. When God does it, hallelujah, everything's going to be all right. But back when I was out in the world, when I was one of those that was a wreck, when I was out in the world the next morning, I had those ha uh, headaches called hangovers. I had those problems. and wondered, what in the world did I do? Did I act stupid? Did I act foolish? Well, I tell you today, yeah, I act stupid and foolish. But hallelujah, let me tell you, if I could act stupid and foolish for the devil, don't you think I could run as hard as I can for the glory of God? Because he came in when I was a wreck and nobody else would care. He came in and saved my soul. Change me. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Many have thrown out the prayer, the Bible reading, the church attendance, the God of living, have thrown out those things. Said, well, if we get rid of this, everything will get better. Let me tell you, if things won't get better, they'll get worse. Right. You throw out everything of God you want to out of your ship, but it's only going to get worse. Yes. Nothing will get better in your life and my life or anybody's life until they have God, yes. unless they have God, while they have God. But there's people that's going to come in that the storm of life is raged. The winds and the waves have battered their ship. The winds and the waves have left them desolate. The winds and the waves have left them in a place where they don't know. They don't understand. They don't know what they believe. Don't know why they believe like they do. But they've been taught to do this. Taught to do that. Hallelujah. You see, God shows us and lets us know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I had, a, had a wonderful, had, had a relative pass away years ago. Good friend, like a brother to me. But he went to the church because his family went to that church. Didn't. I was started preaching, not pastoring yet, started preaching. Didn't believe what, what I believe and what the Word of God says. Different type of 
different type of uh, teachings or whatever. I won't get into detail about the religion or the denomination or whatever. And I went to the service. And it was a feeling like I've never felt. Things that went on and took place were like ritual. Say these words, say these things, do this, do that. Ritual. Because that's the way that it's been done. The way that it's always been said. The way that it's always happened. I didn't feel it. I tell you now, I didn't feel the presence of the Holy Ghost there. I didn't feel the shouting unction of God there. I felt, just for lack of a better term, kind of cold, if you know what I mean. Those that have been in God a while, you understand what I'm saying. And Anyways, it was done over the day and everything. And I look back at things like that and I see where people just do things because other people do things, because other people say things, and because of chatter. And that's, that's what I'm trying to get across. There's a lot of people in this world that are doing things because the chatter has told them to do those things. And those things are wrong. And there's got to be somebody that will care enough for them to share with them the truth. Somebody that continues to lead somebody in a lie does not care about that person. I'm going to say that again. Somebody that continues to lead somebody in a lie does not care about that person. The only way to care about someone is that they'll have a better life. The only way to have a better life is with Jesus. There's no other way. There's no other, there's no other option. The only way to have a better life on this side and on the other side is with Jesus. With Jesus. Just call somebody does this and somebody does that. I call it blowing smoke. That's what a lot of people are doing, but there's a lot of people that's being fooled by that and going down the wrong path because of that. That's why, that's why God is showing me that there's people that's going to come in that's a wreck that have been taught everything they're doing is okay. Everything that's happening and is happening within them is okay. We've got to love them through that and share with them it's not okay. Only what God says is okay. Only how God says to live and how God says to act and how God says to be is okay. Only God. You see the Bible tells us we've got our own salvation with fear and trembling. Not much fear and trembling going on in the world. Everybody, everybody wants to harp on everything else and everybody else, but I don't want to go to God with fear and trembling and say, God, help me to be right. Help me to be right. You see, I want to be right so I can help others be right. Amen. I have to make sure that I'm right before I come up here behind this pulpit and preach the gospel. Because if I'm not right, you know what? People's blood's on my hands. And I just don't like those odds. I don't want anybody's blood to be on my hand for doing anything wrong or telling anything wrong. Let me tell you tonight, hallelujah, God sent me by this way to tell you people's going to come in with the wind, been blowing in one ear, been blowing in the other ear, been blowing behind their head, brother their head, been trying to tear their ship up, and sometimes or another, their ship might be tore up, but let me tell you, God sent them to the place to where God can use us for His glory and His name. Yeah. Amen. I want to get ahead of myself. Secondly, <coughs> secondly, their ship, their ship will break. The winds will blow and the waves will crash. Secondly, their ship will break. As we look in the scripture, we understand that they, they went through this and they lightened the tackle and they'd thrown things out of the ship. They'd thrown everything out they could. They was getting scared. Paul stood up and said, you know what? Everybody just stay on the ship and you're going to be saved. Everything's going to be all right. Paul again sharing love. Paul again sharing compassion. Paul again sharing what God wanted him to share. But if you'll notice it in the end, when, when, when they wrecked, and I, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, when they wrecked, the guards wanted to kill the prisoners. The one that tried to help, they wanted to kill. But Centurion says, no, I want to help Paul. I want to help Paul. I, I want to save 
Salem so all the people could be saved because Paul had stood up for right and the centurion found favor in him. Let me tell you, hallelujah, let me tell you, the, ship's gone, the ship will break in people's lives. The ship broke for them. They went and they went where two seas met. They went and run the ship around the front of it. And the back part began to be bashed with the waves and the back part began to, uh, began to break apart and there was boards and broken pieces. And, and at the time that they said, you know what, <clears throat> let's go ahead and kill them. And the centurion said no. And then they said, you know what, the ones that can swim, go ahead and swim. And then the other ones, they had to get on boards and broken pieces. But they all made it to land. Let me tell you, hallelujah, it's because somebody stood up and somebody said, you know what, God said, if you'll all stay here, everything's going to be all right. You know what? Everything's going to be fine. Hallelujah. The same ones uh, that, that wanted to kill Paul were some of the same ones that got saved because of Paul. They got changed because of Paul. Some of the same ones that wanted to destroy Paul and the prisoners are ones that was helped. I like, this, I like what Brother George said a few weeks ago, and I'll say it again. I said it then too. Hallelujah. This start out at the preacher's feet end up at his throat. That's exactly what they did with Paul. Right. They started out not having a problem with Paul, but in the end they wanted to kill Paul because they thought it was going to help. Now let me ask you one thing. How in the world is killing Paul going to help them? If somebody else, or the prisoners, if they escape, oh well. Right? Because you see the prison guards, they got to make it somehow safely to land. They're not going to stay with the back of the ship being busted up and busted to pieces because the waves weren't going to stop just because they was fixing to get out of the ship. The waves were going to continue to crash. The wind was going to continue to blow. Everything was going to continue to crash and, and crash and burn, if you will. Hallelujah. Let me tell you tonight, the ship will break. There's people out here in this world. The ship, hallelujah, has broken. Their ship has been tossed about to and fro, and their ship has broken. And that's why families are torn up. That's why, hallelujah, domestic violence is on the rise. That's why suicide rate is on the rise. That's why drug and alcohol addiction is on the rise. That's why pornography addiction is on the rise. That's why gambling addiction is on the rise. That's why all the things in the room is on the rise. Because people's ships are broken. Amen. They're torn apart. Because they've been pulled this way and that way. And they're broken. The ships will begin to break. People's lives will begin to break. All the pieces. They'll say nothing's been going right. Everything's been bad. Loss of this, loss of that. Everything crumbling down, everything breaking. They'll use excuse after excuse after excuse. And I know those problems happen, those things happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, but we shouldn't count on God when all else fails. We should count on God in the very beginning when things start to fail and things are doing good. When all else fails, we shouldn't be saying, well, I've tried everything else. We'll try God now. That's the mindset of a lot of people in this world when their ship breaks. Well, everything I've tried didn't work. Let me try God. Amen. You know I'm preaching the truth. They'll try, they'll try God when everything else Let me tell you. We need to be sure when people try God before everything fails. Amen. Before everything breaks. But sometimes there'll be those people, many times there'll be those people that their ship is already broken. And they're going to come in. Those broken ships are going to come in. They're going to come in because they have nothing else to do or nowhere else to turn. They've been broken and battered and bruised. I like that song about the, the sails are tattered and torn. I love that song. It's an awesome song. I love it. Because you know what? When the sails are torn and the ship is battered and broken, that's when God can fix it all. That's when God can show up and show out. That's when God can do the work. People are going to come in. Their ship's going to be broken. They're going to be users and abusers of this and that. But that's no way to push them out. That's when we say, come to Jesus. Amen. Let Jesus help you. There's going to be those people the ship's broken, so they're not going to smell the same. Not going to look the same and not going to act the same. They're going to have different mentalities. They're going to have different ways of looking at things. That's no reason to shun them. That's right. No reason to push them out. Just because the ship's broken don't mean it can't be fixed. Just because it's tattered and torn don't mean God can't work on it. Yeah. Doesn't mean God can't change it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, they're going to get to that point. And it's happening in 2021, and it's happening all across the land. People are 
seeing that their lives are is in shambles. They see that they can't, oh hallelujah. They can't count on the retirement system. Somebody was telling me the other day, I don't remember who it was. But they was telling me they checked their 401k and just the other day or the other week that they lost $32,000 in 401k. I said, good grief. What, are they going to pull it out and put it somewhere else or hold it or whatever or stop it or whatever? They said, no, they're going to keep it going. I said, well, what happens if a couple days from now the other 75000 is gone or 80000 whatever money's in there. I, didn't, I don't know how much money was in their account. What if all that's gone? I said, well, that's a good point. You see, we can't, <clears throat> yeah. can't trust in the retirement system. The retirement system, the retirement system isn't what it used to be. I remember my grandparents, my parents put money after they worked, they, they put money in retirement, they would come out. Some of you know what I'm talking about that's already retired. You put money in the retirement system and, and that's what you had to, uh, to count on. And when you retired, that's what you live on. But in today's time in 2021, it's not the same as it was for those time periods that you put yours in. And those people in the past, uh, in the older people put theirs in. It's not the same. Today, it's a different animal. Today it's a different mindset. We can't trust in that. We can't trust in politics. We can't... Mm, help me, Jesus. I'm trying my best not to matter. We can't trust in politics to make everything better. Because it ain't going to happen. In politics, people are out for themselves. Across the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This world, this nation was formed on God. Yes. This world is not an elephant or a donkey thing. It's a God thing. Amen. God created. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. If you know what I mean. Republicans didn't create this nation. Democrats didn't create this nation. Liberals didn't create this nation. All these other uh, ones, uh, political realms, didn't create this nation. But you know who did? God created this nation. Yes. And God says, you know what? There'll be some broken ships that's going to come. Yes. And they got to have a place that they find horrible. Yes. they got to be, there's got to be a harbor that can come and get repairment on their ship. There's got to be a place, which leads me to my third point. There's got to be a land, hallelujah, of help will be reached. A land of help will be reached. Hallelujah. Uh, the one, some swam the land. Some went on broken pieces. Some on boards. Hallelujah. And they all got to land. Some they got to land. Hallelujah. They reached land. Some they reached a place where they could have help. There was a fire, a bonfire out there. We understand the story with Paul where he was out there in that viper meeting. We understand all that. We know the scriptures. But they reached land. They didn't have to swim and swim and swim for days on end. Out there hoping they'd be helped. They reached a land that would be a help. They reached a land that would be hope. Reached a land that they wouldn't be suffering from the wind and the rains and storms and the waves anymore. Batter the ship. Their ship reached a place for help. And let me tell you, I came tonight, I came today, to tell you that God's going to send people that's broken, battered ships that's going to come to this land. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No one church of God. I'm going to get real with you. Hallelujah. Go come to Norwood Church of God. A land that can help. Hallelujah. And not just Norwood Church of God. We're going to come to a land called God. Hallelujah. And God's kingdom that's going to help as well. But you see, it's God's kingdom that's going to lead people our way. And we're going to be able to help them if we're being willing. And when we understand it, we'll know. Hallelujah. This is the place. This is the land. Norwood Church of God is a land that can help people that are battered and bruised. And we've got to be willing to accept them the way they are. Feel the love. 
love of God when this person's right. love. Yes. Hallelujah. If they don't feel loved, they'll go somewhere else. Yes, they may not teach them right. They may not share the right gospel with them. They might not share what well, thus says the Lord. We got to understand that we've got to love them. We've got to care. We've got to let them feel God. We've got to let them feel safety and hope. Around this place. No old church go around around God. Well, they, they gotta be able to feel <coughs> hope and safety. Not not hard. They don't need to feel hard. You know, you can harp on something all day long, but if somebody don't want to do something, they're not gonna do it. You know, that's just like me. I can preach all day long and tell people to come to church, but unless they won't come to church, they ain't coming. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just being real with you. Right. Hallelujah. Unless people want to do, they're not gonna do. A wise pastor told me one time, and I'm gonna say it again. People will always be people. People's going to do exactly what they want to do. Come on. Mm. Come on. People's going to live exactly how they want to live. But you know what? If they come in this place broken, hallelujah, and battered and beat down, we need to be a people that shares that love and that hope with them that Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by Him. We need to be those people that share love and that truth and that hope that you know what? They can say, well, you know what? I feel better. I felt better. And you know what? Those living in those different lifestyles, those living in those conditions which is sin, God can just change them around Amen. and make them live in the right condition. Because yes. you see, a lot of people are being told that it's okay to live in whatever condition they want to live in. God loves them. But I'm here to tell you tonight, we can't live in any kind of old condition. Amen. we got to live in a godly condition. And when we share that with love with the people, hallelujah, hallelujah, we gotta, we, we got to help them to feel like this is a logic place, hallelujah, for God to work things out in their life. Feel that this is a logic place, hallelujah, in their life. I'm talking about our church, but not just our church, but a logic place in God. Because when people just lodge in God, hallelujah, that feels good. When people just lodge in God, things will begin to work out. Have you ever, hallelujah, been having a bad day? And you just heard a good gospel song on the radio and you begin to pray. You know what you did? You lodged in God. Amen. And anybody in here can tell me you had a worse day then, didn't you? Hallelujah. It made it better, didn't it? Uh -huh. When you decide to lodge in God with both and, and feel that love. Hallelujah. 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 Reaching God and allowing God to work in people's lives. That's what God's looking for. A place that will be open like this morning. That's why I say God had to prepare us for this message. We've got to be open and willing to say, you know what? God, have your way. It's not about sing four songs, have a special or two, and preach. Say a couple of prayers and go to the house. It's about letting God move me. You see, when I go to church, I want to feel like I've been at church. Yes, when I go to church, I want to know that something happened in my life.
Hallelujah. Help me, Jesus. The people that cured up. <clears throat> 12 o'clock, Rachel. Hurry up. Have a good lunch. When there's wrecked souls sitting on pews. Need Jesus. Hurry up, Rachel. You know what tonight is. Tonight I watch whatever I watch on TV. Tonight's the night. Preacher, hurry up. Hurry up. Wrecked souls sitting on pews. Needing the hope of God in their life. And we're worried about trivial things. Help me, Jesus. We're worried about trivial things. Hallelujah. Preacher, I got I got to get to bed so I can get up and go to work tomorrow. Hurry up, preacher. I remember hearing the stories of people that used to be in revival 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night. And those people still got up and went to work the next day. You know what? God helped them out. God helped them out. Hallelujah. I've been in revivals. I've been, I've been in revivals. I didn't get home late. Still got up and went to work. He didn't help you. I'm going to get Hallelujah. I remember when I first started pastoring Rockingham, we'd drive back and forth each way. An hour each way. Back and forth. Back and forth. All, anybody's been to Rockingham, you know what it's like. It's a long ride. Back and forth. On Sunday nights, I get home. Around 9, 9 30, 10 o'clock. Still had to be at work the next day. Hallelujah. Still had to be at work. Yeah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Had to be at work. Hallelujah. Keep going. Wednesday nights. A little bit later, because you know Wednesday night starts at 7. Drive, drive down to Rockingham. Have service. Drive back. Talking close to 11 o'clock, 4 p.m. But you know what? God always helped me. Amen. Because I was a being. I'm not, I, I, I'm not bragging on myself. But let me tell you. God will reward those that are faithful to yes, Him. Yes, And you know what? Souls were more important than me getting sleep. Souls are more important than me. Hallelujah. Looking after myself. I had souls look after. Every one of us called a preacher. We gotta look after other souls. Amen. We gotta look after other souls. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We gotta look after other souls. Hallelujah. I appreciate it. Hallelujah. Sister Kenneth, Sister Rita, they drive an hour every service. Sunday morning, or maybe a little longer for Rita. I'm a little over an hour. Sunday morning, hang out down, down here on Sundays. Sunday night, go back home. Wednesdays. I appreciate that. God's good. God's going to reward them for being faithful. Yeah. I appreciate that. They just, they just want God to have his way. God to minister. But you know what? It bothers me. Come on now. When people live 30 minutes away and won't go to the house of God. Amen. It bothers me. You know what? Are we in it for ourselves? Or are we in it for God? Amen. Are we in it for ourselves? Or are we in it for God? I appreciate God. Sending them my way. They're blessings. They're, they're, they're just wonderful blessings. I appreciate it. Hallelujah. And they are fun, especially when they get to sing, won't you do with a fruitcake? You know, that's, that's, that's good. I like that. Yeah. I appreciate it. You know what? We need to get, and, and uh, since uh, Marsha and Sam, since they moved, they're traveling farther too. They have to come. You know, that, that's good. That's good. But you know, and, and, and I appreciate that. When we are hungry for God, when we are hungry and want to do God's work and we want to reach those wrecked people, it don't matter how long it takes, it don't matter how far we got to go, God will use us and we'll do what He says do. We'll do what He says do. No matter how long it takes, no matter how far it is, no matter what time, we get home tonight. When we get a hunger to help those wrecked people, we'll be with God. We'll see. Hallelujah. Appreciate everybody else. Appreciate Sister Pam. She has to get about 2 o'clock in the morning and go to work. Good grief. That's, a, that's early in the morning. But praise God, I appreciate her. She wants to, she wants to help people. She wants to give people hope. Amen. Everybody here wants to give people hope. That's why you're here. You want to be equipped so you can give people hope. That's why we're being prepared. That's why God used this whole day, Sunday school, worship time, to prepare every one of our hearts that we'll be those people that will help wreck souls. There's wrecked souls out there in 2021. Tomorrow's going to be February the 1st. In 2021, there's wrecked souls 
that we will encounter tomorrow. And it's up to you and I what we do with them. Have they reached the land where we say, hey, come on, we'll love you. Hallelujah, we'll love you. We'll love you. God will change you. It's all right. They might say, well, I don't, I don't have this, or I don't have that, or uh, this is not nice, or this is not. Come on how you are, Amen. and let God do the rest. Amen. Come on how you are, and let God do the rest. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Jesus. God's going to work. Just like he used Paul, he can use us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When they are a wreck, we've got to be a land that they can come to. A land that they can uh, uh, park at. A land that they can come that will show them hope and love and compassion. When they're a wreck, when they've been tossed about by the waves and the wind, when the ship is battered and broken and torn, this can be a land where they can find the help that they need. You know what, Church of God? The kingdom of God with us. First Peter 4 and 8. And above all things have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity shall cover the multitude of sins. You know what charity is? It's love. Love. I, I said this the other day. I don't remember when exactly, but I said it. People might not remember your name. Might not remember what kind of... Can, what kind of physical possessions you have, but they'll remember how you treat them. They'll remember how you treat them. God's wanting to use us here in Norwood. Everyone here. He's wanting to use us. He's got a job for you. You've got to have that love and that hope for people that's wrecked. People that are not just like you right now. But that's not to say they can't be. Hallelujah. They can't. And that's not to say that they can't have Jesus in their life and be one of the greatest uh, uh, people that serves God and the greatest worker in the church. Who's to say that can't happen? Yeah. We've got to give people a chance. got to give people an opportunity. We've got to give people love and compassion. Care about their souls more than we care about ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. We've gotten to, across the church world, we've got to saved and satisfied lately. Yep. And let me tell you, don't get me wrong. Missions is a great thing. We've got to help our missionaries across the, the seas and different lands. We've got to help our missionaries. Mission work is great and it's called of God. And I'm glad that God calls people and they are doing those things. And mission work is awesome. It's great. But let me tell you, there's mission work in Norwood, North Carolina. There's mission work in Stanley County, North Carolina that God needs somebody to stand up and mount up and say, you know what? Why don't you come visit with us? Why don't you come be with us? They say, well, I do this or I do that. Come visit with us and let God change you. Hallelujah. Let God change you. Let God move and minister in their life. Let God move and minister and they're like, when God gets a hold of them, He'll change them. And they'll do what they need to do. Yes. Hallelujah. When God gets a hold of them, they'll be what they need to be. Amen. Let God do the work. Yes. So tonight, I encourage each and every one of you. Just a moment, we're going to pray and we're going to leave. But I encourage you to eat on this message a while. Tonight, this week, even watch it online if you want to. View it. God sent me by because he told me there's going to be people that are wrecked that's going to come in. And we've got to be that place for them. We've got to be that place that cares. We've got to be that place that says, you know what, I'll go with you at the altar and pray. Yes. I'll go with you and help you and be there with you, support you. I'll pray with you. We've got to be those ones that say, you know what, just because you're not like me, don't mean you're not a child of the king. You can't be a child of the king. God's looking for some people that'll say, no matter how wrecked they are, I want to love them. Amen. I want to give them hope. No matter how far down in the trap they are, no matter how far down in the dungeon they are, I want to give them hope. And that hope is Jesus.
That hope is Jesus. If we can't share Jesus with people, we need to pray. And we need to, we need to talk to God. Because if we can't share Jesus with people to give them that hope, we might be lost ourselves. We've got to make sure, we've got to, we've got to check up. Make sure that we are sharing that with other people. A place where the wrecked, people, wrecked ships can come. And we can be that light that says, you know what? Jesus will help you. Jesus will help you no matter what you're going through. No matter what thoughts you have. Jesus will help you. Jesus will minister in your life. Jesus will touch you. Jesus will be there for you. Give him a chance. Give Jesus a chance. Give Jesus a try. Amen? Amen. God's looking for some people that will be willing to love wrecked individuals. Wrecked people. Wrecked people. If you'll stand with me tonight. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to pray in just a moment. If there's anyone watching or anyone here, you don't know Jesus. Tonight is your night. Maybe you're here, every head bowed, every eye closed, reverend to the Lord. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Maybe you're here tonight, you say, Preacher, I feel just like you've been preaching. I feel like I'm a wreck. God's here tonight. His presence is here. He wants to help you. Maybe you're here lost, or maybe you're viewing online lost and undone. You feel like a wreck. God wants to help you. God wants to change you. God wants to save you and forgive you. Would you give him a chance? Would you give him a chance? If you feel like that's you tonight, and you want to symbolize to God, it's me, God. Here I am. Change me. Would you slip your hand up and write back down and say, Preacher, pray for me. God bless you. God bless you. But any others? You just feel like you're, you're wrecked. You don't know which way to turn. You've been tossed. To and fro, you've been told this and told that. You've been to a place where you, a point where you don't know what to believe. I'm here to tell you the Word of God is true. The Word of God is real and infallible. Hallelujah. The Word of God will keep you. Hallelujah. You need to hear that truth. Hallelujah. No matter if you feel wrecked or if you're lost and undone, this is a place of hope. This place is called Jesus. Jesus. Jesus resides in this tabernacle. Jesus resides in your tabernacle. We'll let him. And Jesus is most precious around here. He's the one to contact, to get in, in tune with. Hallelujah. These altars are always open. If you raise your hand or did or should have, these altars are open. We'll pray with you. Be glad to. As we pray this prayer, talk to God. Talk to God in your own way. Talk to God and say, God, I'm sorry. Lord, I, I need you to fix me and help me. I need you to change me and mold me and be what I need to be. Those of you here, you're saved to the other most and you know that you are. I want you to pray that you'll be that willing vessel. That when the wrecked ships come in, you'll be able to share love and hope with them. And lead them to the right path. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for each and every one here, Lord. We thank you for everyone watching live stream, God. We thank you for each and every one that is viewing. Lord, everyone, Lord, we thank you for them. God, you've showed up and showed out all day today. And you prepared our hearts for this service tonight. Lord, I thank you for this message. Lord, it's instilled in my heart, in my brain, in my mind, in my spirit. It's instilled tonight, God. I preach it the best I know how and the best that you've anointed me to and the best that you've anointed me how. God, I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for this message, Lord. I thank you for what you've done. You're doing something here in Norwood Church of God. You're doing something for each and every life. Lord, I ask you, those that, if there's any here lost and undone or any watching lost and undone, Lord, <clears throat> Lord, save them. Lord, they're feeling that pricking of their heart right now. They know that they're wrong, and they need you to come into their life and forgive them. Lord, they're asking you for forgiveness right now. Come into their life, forgive them for their sins, cleanse their soul, cleanse their heart, make them whole, change their life. Help them to be what they need to be. Lord, come into their life right now, Lord. Forgive them for their sins and their shame and everything they've done wrong, Lord, and be Lord of their life and be leader of their life, be first in their life. Lord, for all the ones that saved and to the uttermost, know that they are. Lord, reach down and touch everyone, live stream, view it and hear. Lord, touch them. Lord, help us to be willing vessels 
then Lord, we'll allow you to let us have that love and that compassion and that hope that we share with people when those ships come in wrecked and battered and torn, when those ships come upon our land, upon our upon here, Lord, and, and they, they come to, to find this land where they've been uh, they've been out there on the broken boards, and they've been out there on the broken pieces of the ship, and their ship is battered and torn, and they come to find land, find help, Lord, help us to be those ones willing to share your love and your mercy and your gospel uh, to them. Help us to be willing ones that will share your hope, Lord, that with them, that they can hope in you, and you'll help them to be what they need to be. You'll help them to, to be that light, to be that witness, to be that testimony. God, we just ask you to use us and mold us, Lord, help us to be those ones that love people and care about people and have compassion on souls, Lord, that's out there lost and undone. Those battered ships, those wrecked ships that come in, help us to be willing to love them and to help them with your love and compassion that you give us. God, I ask you to go with each and every one. Keep them safe. All those that are here tonight, for whatever reason, Lord, touch them and bless them. Touch all the ones that are sick. Lord, touch all the ones that are battered and torn. Lord, touch all the ones that are watching live stream tonight and viewing God. Touch them and bless them with a special anointing, God. Move and minister our lives as we go forth and do your will. Be that light, be that witness. Lord, we love you tonight. I ask you to go with each and every one. Keep us safe. In Jesus, all the name we pray. The church said? Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming tonight. Remember when the battered, broken, torn, wrecked ships come in? Show them love and compassion. Show them hope. Hope in Jesus. Jesus loves you. Pastor David loves you as well. God bless you.